writing, anything in the film industry, and yeah. So today I'm gonna be doing my book review on Class Act by Jerry Craft. I did um, New Kid, which was um, one of his other books, and he has a newer one named Class Act. So I'm gonna be reading that one today. If you guys haven't checked out the New Kid review, pause this video and go check that one out first, and then come back to this video so that you're a little bit more familiar with the book. All right, so without further ado, let's get started. So if you're not new to this channel, you already know what I do. I read the side or the back of the book for more information, um, the description, so I'm gonna do that. So, eighth grader Drew Ellis is no stranger to the saying, you have to work twice as hard to be just as good. His grandmother has told him that his entire life but lately he's been wondering, even if he works 10 times as hard, will he ever have the same opportunities that his privileged classmates at the prestigious Riverdale Academy Day School take for granted? To make matters worse, Drew begins to feel as if his good friend Liam might be one of those privileged kids. He wants to pretend like everything is fine, but it's hard not to. Withdraw, and even their mutual friend Jordan doesn't know how to keep the group together. As the pressures amount, he starts to feel more isolated than ever. Will Drew find a way to bridge the divide so him and his friends can truly see the acceptance in each other, or truly accept each other? And most important, will he be able to accept himself? This book is by Jerry Craft, like I said. And he's the author of um, a best-selling book titled New Kid. Um, I really enjoyed that book. And today I picked up Class Act because I was like, you know what? I enjoyed that one, so why not try this one? So the main plot of this book is about um, Drew, who, which is this character right here, battling his issues, um, social and racial issues, discrimination issues. And he's just trying to survive the eighth grade while also battling with friends, relationships. He goes to a private school and a majority of the kids in the private school are not of color. So it is hard for him to accept himself or for other students to accept him and not be judged for being too good or maybe just out of the box. This book dives deep into racism more than New Kid did. That's one thing that I picked up. Um, it's very entertaining. It also dives into like friend problems a little bit because one of his friends is white and one of his friends is also black. So battling issues, like he says, one of his white friends is very privileged and he begins to notice that more throughout the book. A lot of the teachers can also show some um, biases uh, a lot of the kids also show biases as well and in the past he had an enemy that they just not did not really connect which also gets brought up in the book it was brought up in new kid and now we get to see a little bit more about it and this one so uh, this book is from drew's perspective but one thing that i was a little confused about when i first was reading the book was that the author like sometimes puts um the views of Jordan's, I mean, sorry, Drew's friend, which is Jordan, who was from New Kid. He puts like some of his comments in there because Jordan likes to draw. And this is a graphic novel. So a lot of um, Jordan's comics can be found throughout the book. I actually really like that because his comics are entertaining and all his comments are about his friend Drew. So that's one thing that kept me reading and I really liked getting to one of those pages. Notice was that colorism was more brought up in this book. Like I talked about in New Kid, if you didn't know, I talked about how I liked that the author brought up um, colorism because it's one thing that is a big part of racism that doesn't get talked about just as much as, as other parts of racism are taught. And I really liked seeing that. Um, as a lighter skinned individual, I kind of like seeing things from a different perspective of a kid that is of a darker skin tone. 
Um, Jordan is a very light-skinned individual, so he does have more privileges than his friend Drew does. That's not always the case, but that can be the case because some people see as, oh, you're not that black, or oh, I have more biases against you. So colorism does come in, and it's like a lot of people of color, um, black people too, can have colorism, v colorist views, which I think is a good thing that they talk about in this book. Okay, mini spoiler, so if you don't want to hear the spoiler, just keep on um, scrolling, and yeah, alright, so this spoiler, is it's pretty small, so it's not that big of a spoiler, but when I was talking about colorism, there's a few parts in the book where Jordan's comics come up, and he's, and someone tells him, like, oh, you're not really black, Jordan, and when he's around other people, he shows, like, people, like, greeting him and stuff and then there's a part where um drew his best friend drew is standing there and then people seem to judge him and some ladies on the phone about to call 911 um crazy but yeah that can happen there's also other views as one time in the book the kids showed a i mean the school showed a documentary of like kind of living in the hood called the mean streets of the south uptown or sorry I think I said that wrong I forgot but it was like something like that and at the end a lot of um the white kids showed a lot of white guilt and that's one thing that was brought up in the book which I also found entertaining because white guilt is when people who are white they when they see like how African Americans or anybody of color are treated and the society they feel like amount of guilt on them and they think they need to do something to make us feel better which is not necessary and um fyi most people of color don't like that so don't do that um yeah so you can drew feels uncomfortable because they're all surrounding him but no one's surrounding jordan jordan's confused like why and he's like oh i know why and i'm like oh i know why too because they talk about it a lot how people don't see Jordan as black like that as they see Drew and the other black kids that attend the school. I also say that there is a moment in the book where this where the author explores like racial biases that people have on other kids of color not just the African-American or black community um the Muslim community the Asian community the, the Latinx community so I thought that was interesting to see because um anyone that has differences with them i think it's important for kids to see representation and books and that's one thing that i think books are evolving for kids is there are a lot of books now out there for rep for representation for kids and that is very important because let me tell you 20 years ago we would not be seeing the same rep the exact representation that we were seeing in books or movies now so that's one thing that i'm really happy is that the society is starting to change its ways the next thing I want to talk about is graphics. Since this is a graphic novel, I like graphic novels if you didn't know, so I do show a lot of graphics on here. So when I do, I always like to talk about graphics because that's a very important thing about the book because it is mostly pictures with dialogue. So there's this one part in the book that I found kind of funny when the teacher tells Jordan like, graphic novels aren't real books and he gets upset. And I was like, if I was Jordan, I'd be upset too because graphic novels are real books. So if that was said to me, I probably would have been like mad like how Jordan was. So I found that kind of funny. Also, one thing about the graphics is when Jordan is walking for his first day of school with his dad, I noticed something like right off the bat. I was looking around the scenery of school and I was like, oh my God, that's actually kind of funny. So one thing I like the author did with the graphics is there were like restaurants or like um popular like businesses that are like booming at the moment but one thing he did was like change a word in it so i saw chick-fil-a we all know chick-fil-a but uh one thing about chick-fil-a they changed it to pork filet and i saw that and i was like that's funny they did the same thing with another one it was like bed bath and beyond but then they like changed the name that's one thing i really enjoyed that the author did there are also a few pages where like um the chapters the chapter pages when it turns to a new chapter it'd just be like a whole page with like a whole cool scene in the background here's a photo for you all but that was like really cool i liked how he did that 
he did that like the similar thing in New Kid, but in Class Act, I kind of enjoyed the pictures. I recommend more. this book to the coming of age audience. I think I'd put this in like the coming of age care, um, like genre. I also recommend this book to kids that want to um, get more into learning about racial um, racism and like racial views. So I enjoyed this book. I could relate to the characters. People that feel as if they may be able to relate to a lot of the characters in this book. I also recommend this book for back to school. This is a good back to school book. Like his last one, New Kid was a good book for kids that are probably entering to a new school. But I think Class Act was a pretty good pick as well because it's like the end of middle school, the last year. I'm going into my second year of middle school, which is seventh grade, but they're going into their last one. So kids that are probably going into their last year in middle school might want to read this wholesome book. But yeah, uh, that is my review for Class Act by Jerry Craft. I enjoyed this book and I give it a 4.8. I loved it. I could relate to the characters. It was a wholesome book. It was funny, creative all of those things and I loved it super much. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!